the Fat Frequency Scarlet Mini. Let's talk about it. First of all, this is an IEM that was sent to me on a loaner program from HeadFi. I'm doing a short written review for this as well as a video review. Um, again, this this is something I've just had at home for a little bit, but it's an awesome opportunity so I can share my thoughts and feelings with you guys. And we can also, you know, I can also personally think if I would want to buy this for myself and we'll get into that later. Let's look at the cable of this IEM. This cable does swap out and you can switch it, switch it. Now this cable does cost more money. You can't, there are two different versions of this IEM, which I think is really clever. It has an upcharge of about $140. I think it might've come free when they first had the pre-orders of this, but I'm not 100% sure. I personally am not a huge fan of this cable. I, it's not that, only that I don't feel that cables make a, much of a sonic difference, but it's also that this cable just doesn't have the texturing that I want. This necktie piece is a little bit off to me. You can tell that it just feels like a thin cable. It doesn't feel like it's really meaty or juicy, and I just, you know, there's something about it that just feels kind of cheap and not exciting. This is the cable I used to test it with. This is one of my favorite cables that I got from AliExpress. It's about $50 and it feels really good in the hand and it feels a little bit thicker and it's a little bit nicer. That's just my personal take on cables and on this cable myself. Now let's talk about this case. I think this case is nice. They kind of have this program like welcome to the family and you know it has a little my name on the front. It's a really nice case. It feels plush, it has good ear tips. All that stuff I think is really solid and I think the case is a nice little touch. I like the red, it's a fun design thing for the Scarlet Mini. Let's talk the shells of this IEM. Now, I want to show this versus the Annihilator because it's so interesting to me. The Annihilator feels like a very normal sized IEM to me. Not really huge, but I can see how some people might not like the size. The Fat Frequency Scarlet Mini is extremely small. I wanted to show another one of my favorite IEMs um, here today. This is the Gizaudio Chopin that I have here. Now the Gizaudio Chopin I think is interesting because it's also really small. And I think, you know, you can tell there's a different, a little bit more of a textured feel to the Scarlet Mini. Um, while as the, the Chopin is a little bit more smooth. And so they do feel differently on the ear. They both do have recessed two pin cable connectors. And so that is, can be a good or a bad thing. Good if you like the cable roll, bad if you know if you don't like the recessed nature of these which i i personally don't really like the recessed two pin cables but you know it it is nice because you can cable swap most cables it's one of the more easy to swap cable connections okay one of the songs that i wanted to talk about is red rum by 21 savage on the, the american album track and i really i just discovered this song and i really like it and it sounds really good on the fat frequency and it really helps demonstrate what this IEM can really do. So what's great about this track is it has these really nice part of female vocals and then it has a really interesting place where the beat drops and it really hits hard and all of a sudden the Scarlet Mini will start to vibrate or at least when I was playing it, it did and it's really quite fantastic let's get get a listen to what i was kind of talking about let's take a second and listen to a clip of this but everything on the fat frequency scarlet mini isn't perfect there are moments that it comes across a little bit unnatural and un and harsh on horns and on violins it does come across a little bit overpowering sometimes when you're listening to certain vocal tracks vocals will come across a little bit too much and so it is a kind of an interesting tuning in that regards and that the vocals do pop on this IEM really well but in sometimes the details get a little bit minced out and some of the some of the some of the instruments don't sound as natural as I wish they would let's take a listen real quick And that last little track that we just listened to, it just doesn't come across very well. And it's not the greatest recording ever, but it's just the instruments weren't coming across as natural as I would want them to be. There's certain things where 
it just doesn't have this great flow to it. Again, a really good IEM, but not perfect on all. Alright, so one example of this where it sounds good, but the bass kind of pulls a few things off is Adele's 30. I love this song, but there's a little clapping sequence around 38, and it just feel, felt too abrupt and aggressive for that part when the fat frequency is playing. Let's uh, take a moment and listen to that. Okay, let's talk the Fat Frequency Scarlet Mini's graph. And you will notice there is an inornate large amount of bass in this IEM. It, it is uh, pretty excessive, to be honest. It is really a lot to take in. Although its tuning is really good, you'll notice there's some slight channel imbalances with this set, but overall my experience with it wasn't, it didn't really affect my experience and I really enjoyed it. Let's look at the 64 Audio Velour. This is the M20 module, it's most bassy module. And you'll notice that the, the Fat Frequency Scarlet Mini still has an insane amount of bass. And that is a good thing and a fun thing, but this is a logarithmic scale, so it is not proportionate to everything. But it, this, it, this bass up to about, you know, it's about 350 Hertz or, or 400, does have a pretty large fat impact on the sound. I mean, if you look at the 3K peak, it has a nice 3K peak on the Fat Frequency Scarlet Mini, which is one of my problems with the Velour. So in some ways, the vocals pop a little bit better, and it doesn't have this weird sense of space that the Velour kind of does have, but the Scarlet Mini does have extremely nice vocals. They both do have a nice little dip right around 6K, and that's you know something to remember. Let's look at the Supernova. This is a really good IM, an IM that I really like. And these are kind of polar opposites in a lot of ways. Um, you'll notice that the, the Supernova has a little bit more of a flat, gradual re uh, ear gain region, whereas uh, Fat Frequency Scarlet Mini has a little bit more of a 3K peak, which is kind of like the new hot thing with the 6K dip. This is a kind of a a popular tuning that you'll see on a lot of newer IEMs and kind of a new 2024 tuning. Does that really mean anything? Maybe, right? We can talk about that someday if you really want to. But this is, um, you know, these are both comparable in price, but I think, I think for me, if you wanted to go with the Supernova, it's a lot more of a easy recommend for most genres of music and for most people. But the Scarlet Mini is one of those IEMs that despite it having this inornate, insane amount of bass, it is still gonna sound extremely good and it's still gonna be a really good IEM for the vast majority of people. And it is, it is a really good set. It is a really fun set, and but it is not a perfect set and is something that I would recommend for almost anyone like the Supernova. Um, yeah, just personal taste and everything. Um, let's look at a few other IEMs. Like, let's take a minute in here and look at the Elysian Annihilator. As we look at the Elysian Annihilator, you'll notice they both have a lot of bass. The Elysian Annihilator's graph is a lot more rounded. They both have a nice 6K dip. Uh, they both have a lot of good energy going on. Um, you'll notice again the Fat Frequency Scarlet Mini has that nice 3K popular peak that you'll see in a lot of IEMs. You know, the, it really kind of depends on what you're kind of going for, but there is a naturalness to me about the Annihilator, and it just makes music sound really good, really amazing. It is a little bit engaging, but the Fat Frequency Scarlet Mini, it's not that it's not engaging, it's just that sometimes a lot of instruments and certain things will sound artificial and a little bit out of whack on it when you compare it to something like the Annihilator. Again, we're being a little bit nitpicky. They're, they're in different classes of IEMs, but I think that's something to kind of remember about what, what we're talking about. A very, very good IEM that could compete with something like the Annihilator, but is it better than the Annihilator? Absolutely not. But on some tracks, I could see how a lot of people might prefer one over the other. So, is the Fat Frequency Scarlet Mini 
a legend or is it a toy? I personally think of it's more of a like a toy. It's a really cute IEM. It works really well. It has a nice packaging and it is, I think it is a good value all things considering, but I do, you know, again, I'm going to recommend not to buy the addition with the expensive cable. Get your own cable. This kind of a cable is really easy to swap out. Like it's really simple to buy a cable for a third of the price and get something else that you want. Maybe even less, maybe even a tenth of the price depending on where you buy it. But there's tons of different options out there for cables. So I think if you, if you think about this as an $800 IEM, it's a little bit maybe overpriced. But if you kind of think about it as say, you know, that $650 IEM with a cable that you can switch out very, very readily, I think it becomes a little bit more of a better value at that point. Again, this is a really beautiful set. It's a really fun set. I fully enjoy this IEM and I, I can recommend it to you guys, especially if you're a base head, because it's not just a base head IEM. And I want, I want to be clear about that. It's not just a base head IEM, it is a smooth IEM that sounds good on almost all genres of music. But again, it's not the overall IEM that you might want it to be. I think you might like other IEMs from Fat Frequency like the Grand Maestro, like the SC. Those might be a little bit more of a better overall value for people if that's kind of what you're going for. So as far as rating goes on this IEM, I'm going to give this a hesitant five-star IEM. I think it's a really good IEM. I've really enjoyed my time with it and I can fully recommend it. But again, it's a, it's a hesitant five-star EM, not only because of the price, but because if you're looking for a natural sound, it's something that I would really caution you to be careful of. Really, really think about something else. I think there might be other products for you if you're just looking for a fun toy that would be better. Now, would I wanna buy this IEM? I don't think so, because I think this more of a fun tuning IEM, something that's kind of silly, something that's a little bit too much for my liking you know it, if i could get something like this with a switch where maybe i could dial it back and then have a nice iem that could do both i think that's kind of a little bit more to my liking and so i fully have enjoyed my time with this product and can recommend it to pretty much anyone who wants a basic iem but it's not perfect and it's not for me thanks again for watching You're still here. It's over. Go home. Go watch another IEM video. It's done. That's the entire video. What more do you want?